So, these are the steps we take to solving rational equations. Um, hopefully you're writing them down, got them down. Now what's hard, once again, is keeping the steps separated versus all the problems we've learned, because there's a lot of similarities here. Um, you guys have really got to follow my steps to a T, because the reason I teach them that way is because over the years I've seen, and I've changed how I taught things to make sure people don't make the errors I see them make. And then today, you know, I've been seeing people going back to, they're just not following the steps exactly how I show them. Do, I'm doing it for a reason. Okay, so um, an expression is like such. Um, four plus, sorry, four over x plus five plus uh, three over x minus two. We're not solving anything. We're just simplifying an expression. There's no equal sign. We're not solving for x. So we know when adding and subtracting, the first thing we do is factor the denominators, get a common denominator, right? Multiply out the numerator, meaning distribute and combine like terms in the numerator, and then you'll put your denominator back in once you've done all that, right? Then you'll just factor and simplify. Now, the equation has a lot of the same steps. So an equation now has an equal sign. We're going to find the x value that if we plugged it in, it would make this a true statement, like 2 fourths equal 1 half, for example. Does that make sense, everyone? So we're just going to solve using algebra for x. So first, we do the same thing. We factor the denominators only and get a least common denominator. Now, we also are going to restrict because we're going to have times when extraneous solutions come into play. What an extraneous solution is, is a solution you get that when you plug it back in, it doesn't work. It doesn't really work with the original. So let me explain. Let's restrict this denominator. X cannot be 5 or X cannot be 2, right? So let's say I was solving and I got X equals 5. I would have to say, well, that solution can't be. We said it couldn't be. So we would throw that solution out. That would be an extraneous solution. We would just throw it out. That's not a solution. We just chuck it out the door. Okay? You'll see us have some examples like that. So that's the first thing we do. Get a common denominator, state your restrictions so that we know what solutions we cannot have. Then second, all we're going to do is distribute out the numerator, just like addition and subtraction, but this time there'll be an equal sign, so we'll be solving the numerator. Now we get to solve using the numerator only, because once we have a common denominator, the denominator is the same. It's not going to matter. So then we'll just solve using the numerator, and then we just check our solutions, making sure that none of them were extraneous, meaning none of our solutions came out to be ones that we could not have. And then the nice thing is, on the test, you should be able to know if you got every single one of these solving problems right, because you can plug your solution back in and check it. So let's just go through these steps here with some examples. Really, there's only going to be like four examples, and then you're good. I can always come back to these steps. Okay, so first example is number seven off the homework, so I would be doing them. Um, once again, evens or odds is going to be kind of the same theme, but it's going to be every other even or odd. I would just write it down so that in your notes, if you need to refer back to them over the weekend, you can. Oh, before we get started, first step is to factor the denominators. Well, these denominators only have one term, so they're factored. Second step is to restrict your denominator so we know solutions we simply cannot have. So z cannot equal zero, zero, zero and eight is all good. Eight doesn't have a variable, so we're good. The only solution we can't get is zero. Okay. Now your next step when solving is to get a common denominator. So wouldn't it be 8z, everyone? So we're going to make all the denominators look like 8z. So I would times this one by z over z. Correct? Yeah. This one would need a 4 over 4. And then this one would need an 8 over 8. Now look at your denominators. 8z, 8z, 8z. Now think about it. If I get a solution z equals 10, the denominators will be the same, right? They're the same. Look at them. No matter what I put in for z, won't the denominators work now that they're the same? Yeah. So that's why we can literally just ignore them now and solve you with our numerator. No matter what answer we get, it is going to work in the denominator. So now what I do is multiply out and combine like terms in the numerator. 8 times 3 is 24. Then we have a minus sign. Then we have a 1 times 4, which is 4. Then we have an equal sign. Then we have a negative 5z. Solve the equation. You would say this is linear, so we just need to get z alone. So 24 minus 4 is 20. So we have 20 is equal to negative 5z. So when we divide both sides by negative 5, so z is equal to negative 4. There's our solution. Now we would just check. Was that a restricted solution? No, so that is our solution. And then on the test, you'd say, did I for sure get it right? Well, you'd just go and plug it in. So you'd go, okay, I want to make sure I'm right for this test. 
So 3 over negative 4 minus 1 over 2 times negative 4. That should equal negative 5 over 8. So then you could literally just type it into your calculator as long as you can type it in correctly and then make sure it does come out to be that negative 5 8. So does that make sense, everyone? Awesome. So we should be good. Let's do another one. This is number 10. First step is to factor your denominators. In number 10, the denominators are factored. We are good to go. Next thing is, tell me what restrictions, what solutions we simply can't have. X cannot be 5 and negative 2. The next step is to get a common denominator. Now, everyone, listen to this. We cannot get common denominators by addition. I keep having people, which is a good question to get it out now, but they're like, can't I just add 3? Well, no, or add, right? So they're like asking if we can subtract seven and get back to here. So that wouldn't be, oh yeah, subtract seven. But guys, that won't work. It has to be multiplication, okay? So everyone, x minus five is an entire factor. If this doesn't have an x minus five, there's no way to get an x minus five by, unless we multiply by the entire x minus five. So we multiply by x minus five and x minus five. Yep, and then we have an x plus two and an x plus two. Now let's pretend we had an x down here as well. The only way to get an x is to multiply by x. Like people keep having a hard time with if they just see an x there, but x is just like an x minus five. You would need to multiply by x as well. Okay, awesome. So now you say, is my denominator the same? Yeah, so I can ignore it with solving. So now we would distribute out our three x plus six. We have an equal sign, negative two x plus 10. Then you'd say, I have a linear equation. To solve linear equations, I combine my x's with algebra. So I'm going to add 2x, and then at the same time, I'm going to subtract 6x to get x alone. So now I have 5x equals negative, oh, positive, 4. So then from there, solve for x, divide by 5, divide by 5. <coughs> x equals 4 fifths. Then once again, check, it wasn't an extraneous solution. No, so we're all good here. Yes. Um, so with this one, we're solving for x. So once again, we're just seeing which one's a true statement. So with adding and subtracting, the denominator didn't go anywhere. Um, because we're not actually solving for x, so you would need to put it back in. We were, aren't going to go this far because there's not equal signs. We would have been, well, there wouldn't have been an equal sign. But no, we wouldn't need to ever put back in the denominator because if you think about it, when we plug in for this, won't the denominator be the same for sure? Because they are the same, right? So if I plug in zero, they'll be the same. So no, there's no, the denominator, once we solve, won't matter. Because it will be true when we plug it in. Good question. Okay, another one. Getting a little harder each time. So number 16, the first step is to factor your denominators. Now, if you don't have a denominator, please, everyone, get in the habit of writing in your denominator as 1 so you don't mess up on accident. So this is m over 1 plus 8 over m equals 6 over 1. So now you say, okay, factor the denominator, done. Second is to restrict the denominator. Meaning m can't equal zero, true? Mm -hmm. So now we can get a common denominator and then we'll solve with the numerator. So we times by m over m, m over m. Does everyone agree? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. So we have m times m, which is m squared, and we have plus, 8 equals 6m. Now, I always have people get here and they're like, ah, oh, square root? Wait, what? No, no, we can't square root. We can't square root 6m, can we? So how do we solve quadratics? We can't freak out when we see a quadratic. First rule is get it set equal to? Zero. zero. So we'd say, okay, subtract 6m. Subtract 6m. So then we have this m squared plus, no, minus, sorry, minus 6m plus 8. equals zero. Now, so we could put the denominator back in. Let's pretend we did. But now think about it. If we solve the top, the bottom will always be true, right? Because they're all n's. Does that make sense? So it's, it essentially won't matter. And then we could take m and times it by zero. Gone. Does that make sense, kind of? Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's solve. How do we solve quadratics? 
Yep, we always factor it. So it multiplies to be 8, unless it doesn't factor. But I'm telling you, your quadratic should factor for the most part, if it's going to work. Um, so we'll multiply. Well, I'm just saying most of them should factor on here. Like we're giving you ones to solve, they should factor. It's very rare that you would have to do the quadratic formula. So if you feel like you, if you're doing the quadratic formula, I would go back and check. And if you're absolutely sure, then yeah, move forward. But otherwise, you probably did something wrong. Most of them are going to factor. Okay, so what multiplies to be 8 and adds up to be negative 6. 4 times 2, negative, negative. Yeah. Careful, people are just saying, oh, those are my solutions. No, they're not. Those are your factors. So that's n minus 4. That's n minus 2. Don't jump the gun here. So therefore, n is actually equal to? 4 and 2. Good, 4 and 2. Now, let's circle them both. Were either of those restricted? No, it just couldn't equal 0. So we have those two solutions. So now we'll see when we're actually um, ends up being restricted. So next example here. So number 30. <clears throat> so as you're writing it down, I'm just reminding us of our steps. The first step we do is to factor out all our denominators. So notice we will have a fat, we'll, this is the first time we've had to factor a part of the denominator. I'd rewrite my problem, so that's 3 over x minus 4. I still have people having the hardest time factoring two perfect squares. Well, multiplies to be negative 16 and adds up to be 0. 4 and negative 4. Or we can know our trick. If we have two perfect squares, the square root of the front thing we get x, square root of the back thing we get 4. True? Yeah. Yeah, because middle terms cancel out, that would be conjugate, so that would be a plus or minus. So just a reminder. Okay. So now on top we still have our 5x plus 4, and then on bottom we have x plus 4, x minus 4. Then we have a subtraction sign, and then we have 4 over x plus 4. So let's restrict now. x cannot equal... Okay, good. Yeah, and then anytime I have two terms, I go put in parentheses just to make sure I don't make any errors eventually. Okay, so now get a common denominator. So this one needs an x plus 4. An x plus 4. This one doesn't need anything. This one needs an x minus 4 and an x minus 4. So now once again, if I solve for x, the numer the denominator will be the same, no matter what. Let's, so let's find the thing that makes the top thing true, because that will make whatever our x is, will, the bottom will be true. So let's ignore the denominator now. And now we're solving. So 3 times x is 3x. We have plus 12. Then watch equal sign. We didn't do anything to that, so we just have a 5x plus 4. Then careful, this is where people start really messing up. This is not just 4, this is actually negative 4, isn't it? Yeah. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Right here is usually where people miss it. It's negative 4 times negative 4 plus 16. You say, there's my true statement, so I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 3x plus 12 is equal to, over here I have x plus 20. So now solving for x, I subtract x. Subtract 12, I'm hitting two birds with one stone. So then I have two x's is equal to 8. Therefore, x equals 4. Now if I look, I say, uh-oh, no, it actually can't equal 4. So that is not a solution. Well, there were no other solutions, right? So there's just no solution on this one. There are times when no matter, we can't plug anything in here to make it a true statement. No solution. So there are times when I would solve a quadratic and there would be two solutions. One of them would be a restricted value. So you just cross that one out and then you only have the other one as a solution. Does that make sense? There are times when a quadratic will have both of them cancel out and it would be no solution again. Meaning, what I mean by that is both of them can't be. Does that make sense? So you'd say, oh, those are my two answers, but those were both restricted. So no solution on this one. Okay, awesome. Let's look at... Let's just do one more because people were not following these steps exactly. Not this one. I think that one's too similar to the last one. I want to do this. Wait, right here. Let's do this one and then we will call it good for the most part if you guys feel good. So the first thing is to factor the denominator. So you'd say what multiplies to be negative 3 and adds up to be 2. 1 times 3 and it looks like negative 1. Yeah. 2 over z minus 1, z plus 3. Then moving on, what multiplies to be 3 and adds up to be 4, 1 times 3. So we have a plus sign, we have a 3, we have a z plus 1, z plus 3. 
Then we have an equal sign. We have a 6, 2 perfect squares. 1 multiplied by negative 1 adds up to be 0, 1 and negative 1. So our bottom factor is to be z plus 1, z minus 1. So then we would say, okay, we need a, to restrict. So z cannot in the end be 1, negative 3, or negative 1, correct? Yeah. Okay, common denominator is our next step. Z minus 1, this one doesn't have a Z minus 1, it needs it. This one doesn't have a Z plus 3, but it needs it. This one doesn't have a? Okay, good, Z plus 1. Now you'd say, are my denominators the same? Yes, so I can ignore them. So now let's go ahead and start distributing it out. So we have this, 2Z plus 2, plus sign, 3Z minus 3, Equal sign, 6z plus 3. So then from there, notice I'm not... Uh-oh, no, uh -oh, plus 18. Let's make that an 8 and then a 1. <laughs> Easy fix. Okay, good catch. So now we'll combine like terms. 2z's plus 3z's, 5z's. Then we have a minus 1 equals 6z's plus 18. Then we'll subtract 5z. Subtract 18. So on this side, it looks like I'm going to have a negative 19. Do you agree? Yeah. Equals Z, which wasn't a restriction, so we're good. Does everyone feel okay about this? Yeah. Okay, follow those steps, and you should be good. Okay, so what? just making sure I'm not going to do this one, I'm just going to ask you, what should you write right here? What should my denominator be? One. Okay, awesome. Then what, so we, okay, we get the picture here. So what I want you to do is go to this section, and I only want you to do every other even or odd. So even or odd, every other. Yeah, because we're going to kind of just do enough that we have enough practice, but not overbearing, okay? Yeah. Then also we're only going to do on that section 1 through 36. The rest is not going to be assigned on or on this test. Okay, so 1 through 36. Every other even or odd, so that's not that many problems, like around three or four, right? Okay, now keep in mind, guys, listen to what I'm about to say. Less practice does not mean higher test score. So if you're struggling with these, don't just say, well, that's what was assigned, so I'll just move on. Practice a few more. That's why I have so many on there is for your um, ability to practice. Now, we do not have an official test review. So look, the bonus test review is worth 3%, as you'll notice and look. That is not a requirement to do. If you don't have time to do it, that should be on your last priority list. However, I do recommend, you see up here, this review. This is what I recommend to do as the official review. It is not a requirement. However, people, this is your grade, your test score. You don't want to be trying to retest the last day of the quarter. It's rough. And most people don't end up doing better because one day isn't going to make a difference. So I would do that review. That's only a couple. That's not that many problems. That's going to be better, best preparing you for the test if you skip around. Next. Oh, yeah, I looked out. Okay, listen. I didn't say this for some reason this hour. So let's say I was solving in the middle of solving something like, right, I was in the middle of solving an equation. And let's say I had, I was at a point where I got, after I did a common denominator and then the numerator, let's say I had this. 2z minus 9 equals 2z plus 4. And I said, and we're at, trying to solve. So we'd subtract 2z, subtract 2z. Uh-oh, the variable went away. Negative 9 equals 4. The variable went away, so we weren't able to solve. And then when the variable went away, isn't that a not true statement? Yeah. So this would be a no solution case. Now let's pretend the variable went away. Let's pretend it went away, but we got... 2 equals 2. Isn't that true? All real numbers. All real numbers. Okay, awesome. Just making sure we're good with those. So not true statement. And all real numbers if it is a true statement. Awesome. I'm glad we uh, clarified that.